there, I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate. And today we're taking a look at Tutankhamun by 25th Century Games. Tutankhamun's a game in which you are going to be sailing your boat down the Nile River, trying to get to the pyramid and King, King Tut's sarcophagus, uh, trying to rid yourself of all of your sins and uncleanliness mm -hmm. uh, before you go amongst the gods. Uh, and so in this game, you are trying to get different sets of collections, uh, moving your scoring counter down from the highest point in the game to zero. You want to get to zero as quickly as possible to be the winner. Let's take a look at it down below, go over how the rules work, come back and share our thoughts on this one. All right, so here's Toot and Comet on the table here. Let me show you guys how this game works. Uh, you are first going to set up your tiles here to make a winding Blue Nile River. That's what this uh, represents. It's the Nile River and all the different treasures along the way, as well as different gods that uh, you are going to encounter to uh, hopefully shed yourself of your deplorable sins as you make your way to King Tut's sarcophagus. And uh, this is just a... Uh, Really cool looking shiny uh, sarcophagus. There's nothing inside of it. Uh, it is just there for looks, but you do place it in the bottom of the box, which doubles as a score tracker in this game. You can see here that we've got two uh, scoring pieces that uh, you put on the outer rim of the box. And uh, depending on the player count, you'll put this on a certain point. Uh, two player games, you're, gonna, you're going to put it here on 30. And this is a race to move your scoring marker around the box and get to zero as fast as possible. Uh, what's going to happen in this game, you can see here that uh, we've got two boats set up at the end of the Nile, and uh, you can play up to six players in this game. And on your turn, you are going to make a choice of moving your boat as far down the Nile as you want. You can go all the way to the end if you wanted to. That would not be very good strategy, though. And whatever tile you land on, you're going to take that tile. Now, if it happens to be one of these tiles that has a number on it, uh, this is a set, and you are trying to get majority of the set. The number here tells you how many are in the set, but it's also how many points this set is worth. And so uh, there are four of these, and if you have majority of them when the fourth one is claimed, then you are going to get four points. If you are second in getting a uh, majority, then you are going to get half of the points, so two in this case. And so if I were the red player here, I might move my boat right here and take that tile, and this would just go in front of me until it scores. And you can see here that there's another one right there, and there's probably two more along the way somewhere in the Nile. Now, another option that you can do, let's say that uh, the green player didn't want red to get half of the tiles already, so they moved all the way up here to take this one, and then the red player would go next, and let's say that they want to go right here. These are god tiles. Now, god tiles are going to have different uh, Egyptian gods on them, and uh, you are going to get a little handout, a reference card that explains each of the different god tiles. And what these god tiles are going to allow you to do is to uh, take a tile that's further on down the river or take a tile that you've already passed up. It's going to interact with the underworld, which I'll come back to here in just a second, as well as some of these rings, which I'll come to in just a second as well. Now, once you've passed up a tile, you have the option to go back one space, but one space only to take it. And so if there were tiles further back of the uh, one space behind the player who's farthest back, so let's say that green is there, red is there, this space is no longer uh, reachable to any of the players. And so once a tile no longer is reachable to any of the players, it goes into the underworld where it will stay until certain gods let you interact with the underworld pieces. So I could only go back one space to take this tile, and that is how that works. So again, you can go as far down the Nile as you want, or only one space back. And players are going to continue to do this moving down the Nile until sets are completed, scoring points immediately when done so, moving your player piece on back down the track. Now, these rings are a little bit different. When you land on a ring, you are immediately going to score one point. So again, moving your player piece one little space back on the track. 
And the player who has the most of these, the majority of these rings, once the final ring has been collected, so in this case, that would be this ring right here, as it is the final one in the path, they are going to get five additional points. And so that's how that works. Now, there is a god here, Isis, that is going to allow you to swap out the rings that you've collected with some of the other tiles. And so that's going to put rings back into the Nile, allow you to take others, uh, and so that's one thing you have to keep in mind. That's pretty much the gist of the game. Once somebody gets to zero, that is going to be the final turn. If there's a tie and you have two pe people get to zero at the same time, then it's who's, whoever's furthest back on the Nile is going to win the tiebreaker. And that is how you play Tutankhamun. Let's go back up top, share our thoughts on this one. And we're back, and right now you can see some gameplay footage of a two-player game between between me and Sam here. And we're gonna share our thoughts on this. So Sam, first initial impressions, seeing this out on the table, you've got that long winding Nile River and tiles of different items and such. You got that shiny sarcophagus in the box. What were your first thoughts on this game? It's a really unique looking game. I really, um, the way that you do the, the counter piece the, the scoring piece the scoring piece around the box and they, i mean the the box is part of the game mm -hmm. um i i think it's just really unique the whole thing yeah i, I agree with you sam I, it, I think this has got some really cool table presence and um you know a lot of games i struggle with the setup part and just finding the energy and strength to want to put a game together and put it up this one was actually kind of fun to put together creating yeah. the nile river and just zigzagging back and forth like a snake and uh, I can create the river to go this way or I can make it go along straight or I can you know just do whatever I want with the river that was kind of fun actually um, Sam let me ask you as far as understanding this game and understanding how the set collection works um, the idea of moving your boat as far down the river as you want but you're passing up on some things if you do that uh, what were your thoughts on that I, it was really easy to understand. I, I didn't have any issues with that at all. Um, there is some, you know, strategy for sure in this game, uh, but not so much that it's overwhelming. I think it's a good starting point for a non-gamer for sure. Yeah, I think this is definitely a unique set collection game as you as you build into that movement mechanic. Yeah. You know, you can move as far down the river as you want, but you can only move back one space. And if your opponents move further down then all those other tiles are going to be lost to you they're going to go to the underground uh, the underworld i thought that was a really cool idea with this game uh you know it, trying to get into the beginning uh, workings of of a set collection game i think this is an excellent game to play with beginners as far as set collection goes and having them kind of really try to wrap their minds around how do i you know, do the best that I can on my turn with this movement of moving as far as I can, but I can only move back one space at a time. I thought that was really cool, really good idea on that. So, fun factor, Sam, let me ask you about that. How fun was this game to you? It was a lot of fun. It was, um, you know, when you get the tile that you know that somebody else, yep. the partner was wanting. Yep. And, no, I really wanted that one. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, there's a fun aspect to that. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of no, yeah. and and yes, I did it uh, in this game because you, you take the tile that somebody else wants. But you, it goes both ways. So I don't think yeah. it's something that the non-gamer feels like they're getting slided every time and getting frustrated because it right. definitely goes both ways. There's also a lot of times in this game that I've found that uh, you can get away with something. You can complete a set without some other people knowing about it or not too many of them knowing about it. And you feel kind of like you got away with something. You got some points and, and the other people weren't really aware of what you were doing. And and that can happen to you too. That you know, you it's really hard to keep track of all the different sets in this game. Because oh, yeah. there are so many of them. And you cannot collect them all. And you can't collect them all. That's right. <laughs> They're you, you not have Pokemon. To, <laughs> you have to choose which ones you're gonna go for in this game. And uh, so, you know, if you're not careful, those those sets can get away from you yeah. before you realize it and, and people are starting to pull away from you. Yeah. And, uh, it's an enjoyable experience. Yeah. And, uh, and you're scoring as you go. Right. Uh, it's not a, an end score type of thing. And I think that also makes it easier for a non-gamer to really see as you go uh, and a little bit more enjoyable as well. Yeah. Um, this definitely has race 
aspects to it and the in the fact of you know you're racing to get to zero and so there's some built-in excitement with that i feel like that you know as you just said you score as you go along and so when somebody gets a lot of points maybe they just completed you know an one of those eights, uh, uh, the sets that are eight points out there, and they're zooming along the track, and you're yeah. thinking, man, I gotta catch up. Do I complete this set right now, or do I try to maybe build on this other set so that I can get some more points there? Those are really good, meaty choices in this yeah. game that I thought uh, really works it out well. So, um, Sam, is there anything you wanna say about how this game ends and just how exciting <laughs> it can be? I beat him horribly. <laughs> yeah. We were coming down right to the very end, and I thought I had it in the bag, and she just pulled off a miraculous <laughs> move right at the very end and, and stole a victory. a strategic plan. To yeah, it. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Um, and I've played this with some other people, and it feels like a lot of games do come down to the wire. Uh, you're going to have a lot of exciting finishes in this one, I feel like, because it is a race to zero, and nobody wins till they get to zero. And so you do have a chance to catch up and, yeah. and complete some sets and get it going uh, right there towards the end. And just being mindful of the sets that you're trying to collect and seeing which tiles are closest to the, the pyramid in knowing that those sets aren't gonna complete and finish until later on in the game, you just have to be mindful of all of those things. Lots of, uh, you know, strategy going into this game. Yeah. Really cool how this game works out. Really l enjoyed this one a lot, so. Pros and cons of Toot and Common, Sam. What were the pros about this game that you really enjoyed? Um, it's just unique. It's a unique setup, it's a unique look. It's definitely not um, a, uh type of game that we've played before. It's not a theme that you see, see very often. Um, it's it's pretty quick, it's easy to understand. It, I, I mean, lots of pros. Okay, very good. Any cons? I mean, some of the um, icon iconography are a little bit similar. Mm, yeah. But that's really, you know, picking at hairs there right yeah and i can see that um there were oh, several times where i had to have to look really close at yeah. a piece to say you know is that the the dude sitting on the throne or is that the the just the empty chair yeah you know like there are yeah. some times where i really had to struggle but that, with that really is just nitpicking <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um I would say maybe throwing in there too real quick that the gods in this game can be a little di hard to differentiate uh, yeah. between yeah. and you do have to reference that reference card quite a bit just yeah. reminding yourself okay what does this one do who is that um, and and with those gods a lot of times if they end up at the beginning of the Nile they're kind of they're kind of worthless they're not really useful unless that they're further along down the river and you get further into the game so that would just be one small minor nitpick yeah. that the way you set it up it's just completely random how those tiles end up and if they end up at the beginning that kind of stinks yeah. you're, you're gonna miss out on being able to use some of those those god tiles so uh, all right so there you go pros and cons um, let's get into our score of this scale of one to ten love to hate what do you give toot in common i probably give it a 7.2 7.2 solid score very good i'm gonna be much higher than that i really enjoyed this game i'm gonna be probably an 8.1 I really enjoyed this one. It's one that I want to get off the shelf and show other people, especially for just the table presence, that shiny sarcophagus and the fun winding river. I yeah. uh, really enjoyed this game, and it's one that I feel like works with a lot of different people, no matter where, what kind of gamer you are, um, experienced gamer, non-gamer. I think this one works really well. So. You recommend playing with non-gamers? Yeah, absolutely. All right, there you have it. That's Toot and Common from 25th Century Games. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.